everyone and welcome to another episode of Everyday Black History. Now today we're going to be highlighting a man by the name of James Durham. And James Durham is important because he's known as the first uh, black American to practice medicine. Now although he didn't have a medical degree, he was still a successful doctor. And he's one of the people we like to highlight here on Everyday Black History because he was a slave who was able to buy his freedom and then start his own practice and become a successful, well-known and respected doctor. Now, uh, there's not a lot of uh, detailed documentation of his life um, about, you know, the way he died because it's known that he went missing in 1802, never to be seen again. Now, some might have believed that he was murdered for his success as a doctor, which is very much possible. And some others believe that he just left uh, Philadelphia, where he was from, to practice elsewhere in the world. But we don't know. But he is recognized as being the first African American to be a physician, uh, to be a physician in the United States. Now. Um, he was born in 1762 in Philadelphia, and he was a slave, as we mentioned, and he was owned by slaveholders who themselves were doctors. Uh, his first owner, Dr. John uh, Kersley, was the, um, was the person who taught him how to read and write, and he taught him how to read and write both uh, fluently in English and French, as well as, Eng as, well as English, uh, uh, Spanish and French, as well as English, excuse me. Uh, he also introduced him to medicine by teaching him the principles of pharmacy. Um, uh, James Durham uh, gained a variety of health-related experience due to his exposure uh, to Dr. Kersley's medical practice. And after Dr. Kersley died in 1776, James Durham, at the age of 15, was sold to another owner, Dr. George West, who in turn helped him uh, uh, to expand his knowledge of medicine. In 1783, when he was 21 years old, James Durham was 21 years old, he was then sold to another doctor, Dr. Robert Dow, who was a prominent Scottish-born physician living in New Orleans, Louisiana. Now, and he was one who uh, further helped James Durham in strengthening his medical training. Um, he allowed James Durham to practice on patients of uh, different races while working with him, which was the first recorded instance in the United States of a black person trained in medicine being allowed to work with patients of any racial background. Um, and uh, later in 1783, uh, James Durham uh, brought his freedom with the money that he saved while working with uh, Dr. Robert Dow. And uh, he was able to practice medicine independently in New Orleans where he specialized in throat medicine. By 1788, he had established uh, many prominent connections through his reputation as a reputable f uh, physician. And he was noted for his treatment in cases involving the throat and nose and the serious infections that came with those. His success ignited the interest of uh, Dr. Benjamin Rush, who was uh, known as the father of modern medicine. He was a prominent physician at that time in the United States. And, uh, He's known for, you know, being the father of, mo of modern medicine in the United States. And he was even impressed with James Durham. And he was so impressed that he wanted him to come back to Philadelphia and open up a practice there. But James Durham stayed in New Orleans, and he helped to save the lives of uh, many patients during the epidemic of yellow fever that swept the city in 1789. Uh, he continued to see patients of various backgrounds during this time as well. He eventually returned to his hometown of Philadelphia, and um, despite being uh, an exceptional doctor, uh, his practice will be restricted by Pennsylvania's regulations, which established in uh, 1802 that uh, barred anyone from practicing medicine without a formal medical degree. But he still continued to practice uh, medicine and still continue, continue to treat people of different uh, racial backgrounds. But as mentioned, he mysteriously disappeared in 1802 and no one knows what happened. But uh, we still salute him for his place in history. He was a major contributor 
to Black History and Black Culture for his accomplishments. So James Durham, we thank you for your uh, contributions to Black History, and we salute you. That concludes this episode of Everyday Black History. Please continue to tune in. Um, I got the uh, podcast Everyday Black History on iTunes and Spotify, also on Anchor FM, and it's on anywhere where you listen to podcasts. Also, we're on Instagram, Everyday Black History, uh, Twitter, Everyday Black History, and just please continue to support. And uh, thanks for the thanks for showing love. But stay tuned for the next episode.